warning. This experiment deals with open flame and the release corrosive phosphorpentoxide smoke. This reaction must be carried out in a fin hood or outdoor. In this video, we are going to make phosphoric acid by burning elemental phosphorus. Okay, let's skip all those chit chat this time and jump right into the important part. The setup here is pretty straightforward. I have a pump here that is connected to various tubes to suck the smoke that will be generated by the reaction over here into the 3 neck round bottom flask. I will explain the detail just in a second. Okay, first off, 100 ml of distilled water was added into the flask, and the joints are greased to obtain a better suction. I load about 20 grams of red phosphor into the candle holder I got from Kmart. Okay, okay, before anyone yelled at me for wasting precious red phosphor like this, hear me out on this. The red phosphor which is about to burn in this reaction was heavily contaminated during the time that was away from my studio. Apparently, it was oxidized for some reason and the product which absorbed the moisture from the air and essentially it was making phosphoric acid by itself. As you can see, the red phosphor in the bag became very wet. Well, I would have spent some effort to purify it if this is all I have left, but uh, I have loads of them. So I think I might as well just help finish what the nature has started. I hope this explains my seemingly outrageous action. Okay, now it's a good idea to turn on the pump to see if this apparatus works at all. What this setup does is to create a low pressure zone inside of the flask. To compensate the differences in pressure, the air outside of the flask will rush into this funnel here, along with the smoke that will be generated in this reaction, and the traveling through the pipe and end up in the flask. Okay, without further ado, let me just light it up to show you what it actually does. There are two reactions happening simultaneously. First off, the red phosphor is reacting with oxygen from the air and produce phosphor pentoxide, which is the white smoke as you see here. And meanwhile, the phosphor pentoxide from the previous reaction is now reacting with water to give us the desired product phosphoric acid. This setup can also be used to make sulfuric acid and carbonic acid by burning sulfur and carbon. But make sure to control the rate of the first reaction so you don't make the mistake like I did over here. Apparently, I underestimated the rate which the smoke is generated. It exceeds the maximum capacity which my fin hood can handle and posing an obvious safety hazard. So I pulse the reaction by covering a piece of watch glass over the candle holder. I waited for everything to cool down and uh, getting ready to resume the reaction. And uh, this is when I realized I made another mistake. The watch glass is now tightly pushed against the candle holder by the higher atmosphere pressure. It is at this moment I realized I should probably have gone to the gym more often. According to my rough estimation, there's about 20 pounds of force acting on it. Uh, I guess there's nothing I can really do at this point. In the end of the day, there should be some product after all. Okay, now to test it. I grab a pH paper, and the result shows the solution is strongly acidic. Despite there's a lot of setback and mistake along the way, there we have it. Phosphoric acid from elemental phosphorus. A big thank you goes to all my supporters on Patreon. Everyone support me on Patreon and get to see my video 24 hours before I put it on YouTube. Anyone support me with $3 or more will have their name listed as you see here. I really appreciate any of your support.